What's up, Zox fam? And we're back with some more Death Slight. Now, we're going to be getting into Mateo. Is he overrated, okay? Hyde or Mateo, right? Uh, this is some of the things that I've been hearing you guys talk about uh, when looking at these two characters. Now, I want to kind of give a perspective and kind of play devil's advocate when looking at what part and really where you're at in the game. Um, now, we're going to be jumping into Mateo, looking at his kit, and of course, dissecting and really deciding ultimately is this a unit that you must have on your account or is this a unit that is nice to have or should you not even pull them all together so of course guys definitely make sure that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss on any of the exclusive content coming to the channel but let's go ahead and let's jump right into it uh because we got a lot to talk about so i actually um you know was looking at my mateo and it was a couple of different things that i wanted to kind of overview when we're talking about the value the character gives you when you first get them right so mateo just to recap s1 blast burn uh attack one enemy two times damage per hit is 50 percent of attack can go up to 60 percent and can have up to an 80 percent chance of triggering uh the dispelling of one buff with the s1 uh, and inflict spark for two turns now uh if we're doing a comparison let's actually do a side-by-side -side comparison i want to actually you're going to do something a little bit different today um so with hides s1 he is going to attack all enemies, 65% of attack, uh, has the opportunity to be able to steal one buff with each hit, uh, and enemies max HP capacity is minus 100%. Now, keep in mind, I do have him R6, so we're going to also talk about his resos as well, right? Uh, now, going back to uh, the Mateo, at the R2, uh, you're going to have attacks uh, enemies two times. Damage per hit is 85% and up to 100% of attack. Inflicts disease and defense down for two turns. Each speed grants extra damage, uh, which is 0.1% of attack. Before attacking, if the enemy already has spark, gains five stacks of eternal flame, right? Now, on top of that, just to really quickly cover the S3, uh, you're also going to be able to get the fire or use fire punch, which gains three stacks of eternal flame, inflicts spark on one enemy for two turns, then attacks the enemy three times, damage per hit is 60% of attack, each hit steals one buff, right? Upon <laughs> successfully stealing, Mateo gains three stacks of eternal flame. Uh, each speed grants the extra damage of 0.25% attack, and Mateo gains one stack of eternal flame when being healed, and this can go up to 75% attack and also a four turn cooldown. Now, for Eternal Flame, it's gonna be giving you 2% more attack and minus 1% damage taken per stack. And when Eternal Flame, um, uh, Eternal Flame stacks is minus two when Mateo takes a critical hit. And then Spark, when the carrier takes a critical hit, Mateo gains 5% AP and deals extra damage to the target. Extra damage is 30% of Mateo's attack. It won't miss, land a critical hit, or trigger an elemental boo, right? Now, Going back to high, just to quickly recap his uh, abilities, his passive, which is his Reaper passive. Uh, high cannot receive buffs or debuffs. Damage taken is minus 10%. Um, and upon receiving a buff or debuff, gains one breath of the deep stack. Uh, upon a teammate's death, he is going to gain 10, which it gives him a max of 50. Um, and when taking fatal damage for the first time, survives and restores HP. Healing per breath of the deep stack, uh, so it can go up to 50%, essentially, right? Now, breath of the deep grants 5% attack per stack and plus 3% damage reduction per 10 stacks, right? So per 10 stacks. So that means in total, you can get up to, in terms of damage reduction, 9% or no, I'm lying. Uh, it's 369, 12, 15, 15%. There we go, right? Uh, so that's important to mention. Then, of course, for the 50 stacks, you get the 5% uh, attack per uh, per stack, um, which, again, is pretty massive when you're talking about, um, you know, 50 stacks. So that that's actually, actually kind of nice. Not going to cap, right? Uh, now, outside of that, um, that's pretty much hide, right? Now, um, oh. Last thing, S3, I almost forgot about that. Sybaris AoE steals one buff from uh, each enemy. 110% uh, of attack restores HP upon um, uh, upon damage dealt is 30% of the damage dealt, right? Now, that is, of course, considering resos. So let's actually jump into the resos really quick. Now, I want to point this out because a lot of people I've heard say, hide's the better, you know? Hide, you might as well just use hide. Um, or hide is just ultimately better, right? Now, the thing is, is that when you're looking at Hyde, Hyde's kit, when we go to his resos, his kit doesn't open up until he gets resos. So R2, unexpired Breath of the Deep can be used in subsequent waves. It makes him now accessible and good in wave content, right? 
Then when we go to R4, when an ally is currently not alive, crit damage is plus 40%. That gives him more damage scaling. And then the R6, at the start of combat, he gains 10 Breath of the Deep stacks, right? Now, I will say when you're building Hyde, Hyde is not an easy unit to build. Uh, he is a unit that does require you to have the right amount of stats as well as max skill ups um, that really make him effective as a DPS. You can't build him tankier in you know the earlier portions of the game, but if you want him to be useful to you uh, in the way that people like to use him uh, when you're talking about in-game players, uh, you're really going to want to have in-game stuff on him. Like it's just really the matter of the fact, right? Now, he also has a resist lead, right? So that, that's another thing we're going to throw in there. When we're looking at Mateo, what is he getting for his abilities, right? Uh, and there's one thing I want to also point out as well with his kit is that he gains 5% AP, right? Every time, <laughs> every time the carrier takes a critical hit. So this means this dude is going to be rotating like a madman right um because this is when allies like it's very much so applicable like third eye seal think of it like that every single time that mateo has an ally hit every time he hits he gets rotated right that's something that he gets a, he gets an ap boost for that it's five percent every critical hit right uh, and the thing is is there is no stipulation it's not once per turn it is how every many hits you can get in that is how many times he is going to rotate if they're all crits, right? So if there's a multi-hitter critting, he gets a 5% AP push every hit. And that is insane, right? So on top of that, he then is able to deal extra damage to the target. So it's, it's, it's a lot that goes into his kit outside of like what Hyde has, right? Hyde doesn't get AP manipulation innately. Um, he does have the HP ceiling decrease, which is a, a factor to consider. But when you're looking at things like the speed lead that Mateo gets. So it is a speed lead for Ritual, Sonic, Miracle, Desert Lance, and Sentinel Hunt. This is probably some of the most important pieces of content that as a newer player, mid-game player, and even in-game player, you need to be doing, right? Uh, you can actually utilize Mateo and he has value as a lead. Is it the best speed lead you can get? No, the best speed lead you can get is a global speed lead where you can use it anywhere. But he does give a 35% speed lead on top of the fact that he scales off of speed, he does damage, he's able to AP manipulate based off of the spark buff and or debuff, and on top of that, he has the eternal flame buff, which then gives him the damage reduction and the attack buff. So that's a lot packed into one character that's going to be very, very useful for those that are looking for a character that's going to give them earlier investment or gain, right? Now, the other thing is, is that if we go to his resos, we have uh, R2 which is fire punch. If the enemy has spark, Mateo's crit rate is plus 100%, right? Now, the thing with that is, just means that he's always going to be doing max value damage at that point. R4, when HP is below 60%, life still is plus 15%. Now, one of the builds we're gonna talk about with him, um, again, is emphasizing, it really is what this is emphasizing, is him being built that way, so it really does help him with maintaining his HP. Uh, and then, of course, you have the R6, where fire punch, if Mateo has 10 or more stacks of eternal flame and there is a surviving ally at the end of his turn mateo gains standoff for one turn right uh so this is kind of one of those things where uh you kind of look at uh when mateo has those 10 stacks which typically he is going to have over 10 stacks at all times um you're pretty much guaranteeing that as long as there is a surviving ally at the end of his turn he's going to have standoff which is ridiculous right now this is also considering he's going to be getting rotated by his allies if they're still alive he gets the standoff going right back into his next set they get more hits. He's still rotating. Mateo can get a crap ton of turns before the uh, enemy can even go in a lot of scenarios, right? Uh, now, on top of that, uh, you also, when we're talking about builds, what, how I currently have them built, I have them currently built on the Thunder set. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that um, you can build him on the Hide or uh, the Vampiric set, the Hide set, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's a lifestyle set, essentially, right? Oh, let's go back. Um, so if we go here, 
and we go to the neither set um that's going to be another potential set that you can build him on uh it is going to be the 35 percent life still plus in conjunction if anyone decides to get resos or you get resos of him in the future is going to be a additional 15 percent that you'll be able to get when his hp threshold is below uh, that's 60% mark, which is kind of massive when you're talking about a self-sustaining unit. Now, on top of that, uh, I also have him on the fire reset just to make sure I have enough crit rate, but I do have him on speed uh, instead of attack percent. Um, it is really important, I feel like, for him to be able to rotate um, so that you're able to get more out of his kit. He's going to be obviously critting, and on top of that, he's going to have extra damage to make up for the lack of uh, what I would innately like to have, which is the base attack um, or the attack percent um, on the character, right? Uh, so on top of that, uh, just to kind of top off or to kind of overview the entire build, it's crit damage percent, attack percent, speed, right? Uh, you can do attack percent, but like I said, even when I've been using him in the current content we have, um, there really isn't anything that's scaling speed. Uh, so you really want to have him on speed. You can take more uh, or get more out of him with the speed um, in comparison to, you know, having the attack value where you can get those buffs from things like in the celestial, uh, celestial anomaly where you're getting that right now content this dude is useful in right now one of the things that i will i i can attest to is that right now this dude is absolutely broken in the anomaly event right um and that kind of goes to say is that more than enough of a reason to pull for this character if you want to perform better he is a good option but i don't think that that's a justifiable reason to pull the character when you're talking about long-term uh investment and gain from the character right uh i would definitely say what he can do that i feel like he excels at is things like fafnir um sentinel hunt um and of course he can do some deso stuff right uh now to top it all off is he does get a speed lead so what i actually did was i adjusted my uh chronos team and or my uh, fafnir team and i wanted to see if i would be able to uh get a really efficient run with him and ta together and i have to shout out the homie icebound for showing me this now he was able to get this to be done in like 30 something turns if not less than that but i just want to kind of show you the value that this guy is bringing um he is going to be i would say primarily one of the uh, really the biggest or the strongest dps outside of uh you know yun chuan yun chuan just hits a lot <laughs> in this scenario uh but mateo because of the fact that um he is able to hit so much Mateo's going to be getting a crap ton of AP pushes because uh, Ahmed is able, able to hit so much. He's going to be giving him a crap ton of AP pushes. He's giving a minimum of 15% every time he goes when he has someone inflicted with spark, right? So that's something that I think that you have to consider when you're talking about the um, high hit count units. So even units like Unis, he hits three times as well with his S1. That's 15%. 15% from two units, that's 30% AP push just from two units going, not considering the other abilities and extra buffs that you could be getting, a speed up, AP push, any of those extra additives, right? So we're going to go ahead, and I'm not going to lie, guys, by the way, this is a 100% team. I have not lost one fight with this team yet. <laughs> so that that is also the crazy part about this setup. But um, I'm going to show you guys real quick. Again, it's on auto. So we're going to let them do their thing. So we get our AP, uh, AP push from uh, Unis. Now keep in mind what makes him so good here as well is he also has the capability of stealing buffs. Between the S2 and the S3, he's going to pretty much ensure that Fafnir does not have that freaking damage buff uh, and really the shield buff uh, that gives him more stacks, right? So Todd's going to be the one that actually ends up eating uh, the freeze in this rotation, which is fine, right? Now keep in mind, we're going to go ahead and try to land the uh, the spark here. There we go. So now every time my allies hit, I'm getting an AP push to my uh, Mateo, which is massive, right? So every time Yentron, every follow-up hit he gets, every time Amit hits, every time Unis hits, AP push, AP push, rotation, AP push, AP push, rotation. So it makes it to where this dude literally doesn't get to do much. Like, so... 
even then, right, we're already now sitting at the yellow bar. Mateo gets frozen. That's fine. We got more than enough hits to go around. Um, and the crazy thing is, is that um, because the, the way this team is set up and they're rotating as fast as they're rotating, he's already out of the freeze. He's going to get an extra turn to be able to finish off or buff still either S1 or S3 doesn't matter because he's going to still. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's good as a, a good old fashioned GG, right? So we're going to go ahead and finish off the hit count here. Right. Boom. Um, we got one more hit. And then Mateo actually should be finishing this off. Oh, no. Nope. Yun Chuan did it because he's just a multi-hit freaking monster. But again, it does make it very, very easy for him to do his job. Because, again, when you have the spark, it's going to just be AP pushing this dude to the freaking moon. Right. So, again, just really quickly. I want to do this as well for those that's like 100%. Yeah, it, it is 100%, my guy. Um, so so we are going to just go ahead and do a quick, quick and easy uh, 10 times run, right? So that one was 50. Like, it is so random because, um, again, I got to tune mine a little bit, but I'm pretty sure I can drop this down to like 30 turns. But yes, this is a 100% uh, team comp. Now, somebody's going to argue, oh, you have Unis in there. Uh, let's take Unis out um, and let's put Gabby. <laughs> right uh that's another high value unit that i typically like to throw in uh let's throw in gabby right um and we'll do another set because why not and same thing right uh we're looking at like it's still clearing we don't need the a extra ap push the extra ap push is just really nice but it's just ultimately emphasizing that if you have those hit counts coming through Mateo's gonna be rotating. Like, it, it just is what it is. Like, the dude is pretty good, right? Now, I will say, I have had for quite some time some inconsistencies with, like, my Fafnir team. But considering that they just put Ta up, Ta is amazing here. Um, we just got her for free uh, from the last event. And uh, then having Mateo come in, I mean, to be quite honest, a lot of people should be having a pretty solid Fafnir team, or at least the pieces to making an extremely reliable and solid Fafnir team, right? Now, um, outside of that, um, I, oh, okay, that put me number four on my Fafnir rotation. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. But uh, either way, that's a good number when you're talking about average clear time. Um, absolutely excellent when we're talking about what Mateo can bring to the table. Uh, now, ultimately, like I said, when you're looking at him and Hyde, uh, out of the two, let's actually do a run because I want to show that, right? So let's take out my Mateo. We got to adjust it now because it's a completely different setup. You got to factor in like the lead he has. They're very, they're actually built very similarly too um, with like the HP or with the uh, nether set. Um, so that is another factor to consider. But it, it is very different in how they are used. You don't get all those hits or uh, AP manipulation from uh, Hyde or with Hyde. Um, and when you're also looking at his S3, his S3 doesn't really give you any value in this fight, whereas you get value from the S1, the S2, and the S3 on, uh, from Mateo, right? Uh, and I will say for more in-game oriented players are gonna be the ones that are able to take advantage of Hyde on Fafnir 16 versus people that are a little bit newer to the game. Like you're not gonna be able to really take advantage of a Hyde, right? So let's go ahead and try to do an attempt here. 79, in comparison to my other rotation or runs, let's do it uh, Do it one more time, right? Just, 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 just cause. 66, so again, it is emphasizing that Hyde can work just as well, but he is also a more highly invested unit, right? So I keep emphasizing and stressing that. But ultimately, if you had to pick between the two, what would you pick, right? Would you pick Mateo? Would you pick Hyde? I would personally say that for anyone that's on the fence of picking Mateo versus picking Hyde, um, I would say that you want to make sure you wait until you see what the next rotating unit, um, everybody's speculating this lion dude is going to be someone specific, which I'll have a video coming for that. But I would say waiting until we see what the next kit is going to be potentially for the next unit. Um, I think it is worthwhile considering that if you don't need specifically another unit for fat near then Mateo might not necessarily be the best pull for you versus someone that might need this unit because they still haven't cleared it and they want a easier and a lighter investment and a character that I honestly do feel like is going to have a lot of value because he is able to be able to AP manipulate the way he is able to as a DPS with a speed lead for just the general 
PVE content, which is kind of nice, right? Um, I think it's going to have a lot of value for those accounts. So probably more so for early big game players, you'd probably see a lot more versus late game players. But even then, I still feel like he's a really, really highly valuable character for in-game players. But again, I digress. I will ultimately say they are both good. Um, but depending on where you're at, would very much so dictate which one you would pick over the other. So that's pretty much going to be that. I know that there was a lot crammed into this video, but I really wanted to make sure that I was really kind of breaking down everything relevant to Mateo to really kind of give you an idea of how this unit um, operates, how good I personally feel this unit is. But let me know what you guys think and feel in the comment section down below. Have you pulled him? Have you been enjoying him? Do you feel like he's mid, <laughs> mid tail? Some of you guys have been calling him, but let me know in the comment section down below. But that's going to be that with this one, guys. Stay blessed, stay charged up, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.